Hi guys, my name is Nunk Azimulo and I'll be doing hypothesis testing for one sample. So, with hypothesis testing, okay, just gonna write a heading here. Hypothesis testing. The purpose of it is to basically test whether an assumption is true. And there are three cases um, for the one sample. So, there's a test, there's a case where we're testing for the mean. Let's just say A is some random number, where mu will be equal to A. There's um, a test when we're testing for the variance. And sigma squared will be equal to a certain number. And there's one where we are testing for proportion. And that's when pi will be equal to a certain number. And so then for the now hypothesis, we always know that it's always going to be equal to something. The problem comes when we're doing the alternative hypothesis. For the alternative hypothesis, it really depends on your question. They will give you hints, for example, if it's greater than, let's just use uh, for the mean, for example, okay? So H1, um, they will give you examples on whether they are testing for if something is greater than a certain number, if something is less than, or they might not even give you a clue if something is less than or greater than, or they would just ask you if something is significantly different. That's when you know that your test is going to be, okay, I'm sorry about that. Your test is going to be two-tailed. It's not equal to a certain number. And so, there, as I said, as I said, there are three different types of tests. There's one for the mean, variance, proportion. So I'm just going to start with testing for the mean. And with the mean, there's two types. There's one way they give you population variance and one when they don't give you the population variance. So now we are doing testing for the mean, which is mu. So when they give you, you're given the population variance, which is sigma. So remember our first step. Oh, let's go through the, the six steps in hypothesis testing. First of all, you state your hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. Secondly, you state your test statistic, which is your formula that you're using and the distribution it follows. Thirdly, you, you, take, you, you state your rejection region. Fourth, you do your observed value, which are your calculations. The fifth step is you do your p-value, and your sixth step is you do your conclusion based on the question that they've asked you. So, population variance, given population variance. Now, I've already showed you how we do the hypothesis, depending on the question that they've given you. So, but I'm going to do it again. Okay, so hypothesis, okay? So H0 mu can be equal to a certain number. <coughs> An alternative hypothesis, you can be greater than a certain number, you can be less than a certain number, or mu can be two-tailed and not equal to a certain number. And so then, the test statistic, when you're given the population variance, we say that's, te that's step number two, is z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma divided by root n follows a normal distribution. Okay. And then number three, the rejection region. The rejection region really just depends on what they're asking you, okay? So we can, for the greater than case, okay, for the greater than case, for the greater than case, we will, okay, let's do this. Let me write here, actually. Rejection region. For the greater than case, we will reject H0 if our Z observed value is greater than Z alpha. And remember, you'll be given alpha, and depending on whether it's one-tailed or two-tailed, then you'll divide it by two if it's two-tailed. But I'll get to that as well. Um, if it's the less than case, we reject H, H0 
if z observed is less than negative z alpha. And then for the two-tailed case, we reject z observed greater than z of alpha over 2 or z observed less than negative z alpha over 2. And now, what I forgot to mention in the beginning is that um, the, z, the z distribution, it is symmetrical. So, in this case, two-tailed case, okay, let's say this is zero. No, the side is positive, so it is negative. So, if this is one minus alpha, this is going to be alpha over two, and this is going to be alpha over two. And that's why I'm saying reject H naught if Z alpha is greater than alpha over two, so if it's greater than this, and then, or if it's less than alpha over two, so if it's less than this. Okay. And then after your rejection region, there's someone with a question. No, can you just um, not rub it off for a while? Oh, okay, I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. After your ejection region, say so that's step number three. And then step number four, I don't think I really need to go through that because that is calculating. Okay, I'll just write it here. Step number four is calculating your observed value. So that involves substituting it into your equation. Sigma over n. Uh, and then substituting so into your equation and then using your table at the back of your book to find the values that you need. And then for p-value, which is where some of us do get really confused. Remember, we're still working when we're given population variance. So the z-table, note this, the z-table works with less than values. So, in the greater than case, your p-value will be equal to p z greater than z observed. But since we're working then less than values, we're going to say 1 minus p z greater than z observed. And then you calculate accordingly. With your less than case, your p value is equal to p. So, um, just a question. Yeah. Right, um, so, since you already took one out of the probability of z greater than z observed, it changes since you mentioned that um, z values deals with less than. Yes. So, that means that after you take out the one, it will design itself will have to change so that you can refer to the table values. Yes. So the greater than will change. Um, you can't have a one and a greater than in the same thing. Yeah, then it will become less than, so then you can use the relevant table. It should change one that level. Okay, yeah. So it will change, it will change, yeah. it will change yeah. the yeah. sign. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Excuse me! <laughs> the sign changes, guys. Wow, look at me missing my emphasis. Then table works with the less than values. Thank you so much, Mike. So it, it changes, and then you can use the relevant table. Nay, nee, please, don't make that mistake. And then for the less than case, your z is going to be less than your z observed. Now, remember when we were writing our rejection region, that... Sorry? Yes? What do you mean specifically by your more than and less than case? Is that if... Which number is more than less than which number? If z, so then z observed is going to be the number we calculated when we were doing oh, the so observed value. So the step value. 4 number mm -hmm. is less or more than which number? So if z is greater than step 4 number, then we go to our table and we calculate that. We basically p values like. <laughs> P value is like the opposite of, it's like the opposite of your rejection region, almost. We were trying to get to decide whether P value is less than alpha. So that we can either reject H naught or fail to reject H naught. Okay. So then with the less than case, you'll find that with the less than case that your Z observed value is negative already. And 
you will have to okay i'm just going to put a negative sign you will have to say z is greater than z observed and this changes the sign and then one minus p z less than z observed then with a two-tailed case <coughs> please okay two-tailed case with a two-tailed case your p value okay since we're saying we're dealing with less than values we'll choose z less than z observed okay 2p so with this one keep the two outside the bracket okay first let's change the sign keep the two outside the bracket so you don't get confused 1 minus p z less than z observed so that when you get this answer you don't forget to multiply it by 2 then you get your p-value and then for your conclusion uh, we need to fulfill two conditions for us to reject h naught. it's depending on the hypothesis and you will see also step number three with your rejection region and so for example for us to reject h naught, let's say since z observed since z observed is greater than uh, z alpha and the p-value is less than alpha we reject H naught at whatever level of significance, and we say there's sufficient evidence to conclude something according to the question that they give you. Now that is testing for the mean when we are given, when we are given, given the population variance. All right, so guys, with the p-value, Please take note of these things. With the greater than case, which is this one, the Z observed, what you're going to observe here is going to be positive. So that is why we're making it less than one minus the, this, this, so that we can go to our table and be able to actually um, get the Z value, because our Z value deals with what? Less than values. With the less than case, the value you want to observe here is negative. This is why we had to change the sign. Once we change the sign, we're saying Z is greater than Z observed. And we know we can't find that in our table. So that is why we have to say again, one minus Z, then the sign can change so that we can go to the table and find the relevant value. And then with the two-sided case, please note also that this is not the only case. Remember two-sided can either be z um uh, greater than or less than so then just know that it's basically doing this step and this step we're just multiplying the end answer by two because uh we said alpha is divided by two remember because when i drew when i drew this uh for you guys and we said alphas over two and alphas over two because this is one minus alpha that's what we're doing here with the p-value all right, so also with the conclusion, note that the importance of the p-value is to basically support our rejection region. When your p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject. When your p-value is less than alpha, we reject H0. So yeah, that's what you must note with the conclusion and the p-value. It's very, very important that you don't get confused with your signs and how you change them yeah so then because because the z um, distribution um, correlates with uh, proportion i'm just going to go through all over that now we know the relevant steps we went through them step one get your hypothesis step two your test statistics step three your rejection region step four i'm sure you're even saying it with me now because you should know it off by heart step four Observe value, we calculated, step five, p-value, step six, conclusion. It's all that. So, now for proportion, k. Didn't change my title. Mm -hmm. So for proportion, very, very similar to the z 
uh, distribution. So we know the hypothesis, you know, hypothesis always going to be equal to some value, and then h1, according to your question, greater than less than, greater than, or not equal to. Now the test statistic that we use for proportion is z is equal to p hat 1 minus pi, and then square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n. And I just want you to note that p hat is, is equal to, this is for when you're getting your observed value and you're calculating, p hat is just equal to x over n. So with your rejection region, same thing as, as, as um, the z distribution, as I was saying, when they give you the population variance for the mean. Same thing, you reject z observed when z is greater than z of alpha, or when z observed is less than negative z of alpha, remember, because it's symmetrical, remember? Um, or z observed greater than z of alpha over 2, or z observed less than negative z of alpha over 2. We went through that. Now, it's going to follow the same pattern. You're going to get your rejection region, you're going to get your observed value, you're going to get your p-value. Remember, with the, z va with the z table, always working with less than. So then, you're going to follow the same steps, and you're going to the conclusion is always going to go back to how the question was based and what the question was asking you.